certainly appreciate the prayer and expression there in the prayer. The Lord will lay up on our heart a message befitting to this congregation. And that is truly our, our heart's desire. And I trust this morning that it would be so and that we would have the direction and leadership of the Spirit of the Lord. You pray hard for me this morning. Pray earnestly. The Lord would lead us and guide us and direct us as we go forth in this preaching service this morning. I want to turn this morning to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. While you are turning there, let me make some remarks. We have, I know, done quite a bit of preaching on subject matter of discipleship, of stewardship, being a good servant of the Lord, a lot of subject matter along the line of duty. And one of the reasons is the scriptures is full of that subject matter. And I believe that it is incumbent upon us to study those things and apply those things in our lives to endeavor to be a good servant of the Lord. We know we fall so short. But the Lord has been so good to us, so wonderful to us, so merciful unto us. But this morning, I think maybe we need a good dose of grace. So I'd like to turn here and I want to read these verses. Very familiar. Starting in verse 6. Starting in verse 6 of 2 Timothy chapter 1, starting with verse 6. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. But be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Those are verses of exhortation to endurance. And this very last expression of verse 8 but be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God who hath saved us. God. God hath saved us. That's just real plain and simple, isn't it, brothers and sisters? It is God that has saved our poor souls. It is God that has set forth the scheme and the remedy and the purpose to redeem, to purchase to, to provide the mediator, to provide the means for the salvation of God's people. These are fundamental truths that we rest upon, that we stand upon. These are undergirding uh, supports, uh, undergirding uh, pillars of support to the, to the gospel church. Uh, wherein we uh, have a home provided where we have been planted by the mercy and grace of God and where we have attempted to build a home in the gospel kingdom uh, supported by these wonderful, wonderful truths, knowing and realizing that we are uh, not deserving of the least of the mercies of God. 
that we're not deserving of uh, the very uh, scheme and design and eternal purpose in the three in one God, so purpose whereby to save a people for heaven and immortal glory, but also that God was pleased to tell about it. Amen, that God was pleased uh, to tell the good news, uh, to reveal, to manifest some wonderful truths uh, unto his children here in this world. We certainly know that not all of God's children have the revelation and understanding. There's different degrees uh, uh, of understanding and enlightenment and illumination. But a lot of that goes along too with what a person is willing to walk in and does not resist the illumination and the enlightenment that the Lord uh, gives. Uh, we know there's so much uh, uh, bias and prejudice, uh, uh, so many encumberments uh, uh, that befalls and bewails uh, and uh, that would disturb, uh, uh, that would cause uh, one in this world uh, not to walk in uh, uh, the light as the Lord gives it and shines it forth because uh, of prior teaching, because of prior uh, natural ties of relationships uh, but the Bible teaches us to forsake those things and to deny those things uh, to put them uh, behind us uh, and to follow uh, the Lord Jesus and to follow that enlightenment what a great joy it is to have uh, the wonderful truth and knowledge of what God has done uh, that's where we are saved by hope uh, amen where that we are uh, delivered by a hope a great hope a fervent hope a joyful hope a lively hope uh, and the reason we can have that uh, a lot of it is uh, uh, because of the knowledge uh, of uh, the scripture and the illumination and the light uh, and the walking in it and the fellowship uh, that we have with the Lord as we walk in that light uh, oh, uh, uh, that he gives to us and the more that we know uh, about this great love of God uh, uh, the less fear uh, the less torment uh, the less disturbance uh, that we have uh, on our journey here in this life. Uh, oh, uh, that we uh, realize that it is God uh, that hath saved us. Who hath saved us? It is God and God alone. Uh, you might say, well, Brother David, I know that. Well, I'm reminding you of it this morning. Uh, amen. Let us keep the focus uh, uh, upon that. I tell you that there are multitudes, uh, multiplied uh, children of God uh, that don't know that, uh, that don't understand that. Uh, even many of them will say, yes, it is God that has saved us, but uh, it is God that has saved us, uh, but, oh, uh, this morning, uh, we understand that it's not grace plus anything. It is grace and grace alone. For by grace uh, are you saved through faith and that not of yourself. Uh, it is the gift of God. Uh, all the working of God in regeneration that is needed and necessary to perform that immediate direct uh, operation of God uh, is supplied by God. God and done by God and you can't put anything else with it uh, because if you do uh, then you take away the all of the honor and the glory and the praise uh, that goes to God and to God alone uh, you know this morning uh, uh, those that hold forth uh, unto universal atonement, uh, those that believe that Jesus died uh, for every single person to ever be conceived uh, in Adam's uh, uh, family, all of his posterity. Uh, uh, if you... Uh, uh, have that belief, if an individual has that belief and believe that Jesus uh, died for them, uh, uh, then uh, what makes the difference uh, uh, between uh, those uh, that live with God in heaven and those that don't? Uh, and if they be honest and truthful, then they would have to say, uh, then the difference is those uh, that obey, those that confess, those that repent, uh, those that believe, those that are baptized in water, uh, those that hold out uh, faithful to the end. 
But yet you see though, uh, God has, if God indeed has done the same uh, for every person, uh, then uh, does not those uh, that do something uh, actually uh, have contributed to their salvation, to having their home in heaven, and uh, can really not say 100% that it is God that has saved us. If Jesus died for all men uh, alike and has not, not done anything special for one group uh, of individuals who are the elect of God, then uh, God would have to share honor, glory, and praise with those uh, that have done those things that men say that they need to do in order to live with God in heaven. Uh, the difference is between those in heaven and hell is that those in heaven uh, did something and those in hell did not do it regardless of what the Lord has done. The Lord did just as much. He, if he died uh, for those that are in hell, then he did just as much for them as he did for those that live with God in heaven. We know that's not what the Bible teaches. Brothers and sisters, I believe, and I know that you believe also, uh, that everyone that Jesus died for, that everyone that God uh, has saved, that he purposed to save and provided the means for that salvation, uh, they will live with God in glory. Aren't you thankful to believe that this morning? Aren't you thankful to rest upon that hope? Uh, aren't we so thankful uh, uh, to have that illumination and understanding uh, that we do have this lively hope and we're saved uh, by this hope? Uh, and many times as we face uh, the difficulties and the struggles uh, and the things in this life, uh, that we can be reminded of the very grace of God, that it is all of God, that it's not God plus, but it's all of God. Think about uh, those expressions there in Hebrews chapter uh, 1 that begins the writer by divine inspiration begins this letter uh, with in this way, with this address, God, God. Oh, uh, the same way as Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God. Uh, I want to tell you that God, uh, amen, is uh, uh, the first great cause. Uh, amen, God is the cause, uh, amen, of, mo of movement. Uh, uh, God is the cause. It is his inner core, inner, inner being uh, uh, that moved him, uh, uh, his love, uh, uh, his, his desire toward and his pleasure, uh, amen, toward a uh, uh, a certain group, a certain portion, uh, a certain number uh, of the human family uh, that he foreknew, that he foreloved uh, even before he ever created. Oh, the question is not uh, why uh, does God love uh, only a portion? Uh, the question is, why does God love any of Adam's race so ruined, so corrupt, corrupted, uh, just like a cage uh, full of defiled and fi filthy foul? Uh, uh, but yet, uh, God chose and purposed the remedy for the cleansing. <laughs> Amen. For the restoration for the restoring or for the bringing back of reconciliation of God in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Amen. God is the reconciler. A man offended God. God is the one that is offended. A man is the offender. A man offended God in that original sin and that original sin past all of his posterity. Uh, all of these things come in focus and these are like building blocks one upon another. Each one of these uh, great doctrinal truths, uh, each one of these teachings of scripture uh, uh, complement the other and build uh, one upon uh, the other uh, and shows forth the superiority and the sovereignty of a thrice holy God, oh, that God 
uh, is pleased and purposed in himself uh, to save a people for his own glory, for his own namesake, uh, uh, for his great power to demonstrate his power, to show forth his saving power, to show forth uh, his ability in saving a people for heaven and immortal glory by his grace and his grace alone. God manifests his great saving power, his great delivering power. And God manifests, and he has manifested all through the scripture, a great portion of that power, a great portion of that ability in the very acts of deliverance that he has brought about in the lives of his people while we live here in this life. Oh, uh, therefore proving and showing uh, of great evidence of that future estate uh, of that future uh, whereby that God's people uh, have a very pleasant and bright, uh, amen, an appointed future, an appointed destiny uh, by Almighty God that is very, very much able, uh, who is very much thoroughly able uh, to accomplish and complete uh, and to bring uh, to full ripe fruit, uh, amen, which is his people with him. That is the uh, ultimate and final uh, state uh, of God's children and of the scheme of God and the very purpose of God is for God's people glorified in his very presence uh, and for the Savior to say to the Father, I and the children that thou gavest unto me. All of these things this morning, I'm just bare, just hitting uh, the surface, uh, uh, but uh, uh, as you pick up on and detect, uh, I've already probably covered about 12 uh, uh, cardinal fundamental uh, uh, teachings and doctrines uh, uh, that are all entangled uh, and, and uh, uh, woven together uh, 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 in a complete uh, uh, organized purpose way uh, to house God's people finally at last uh, when the end of time comes uh, for God's people to be safe uh, in glory. God who at sundry times and in divers manners uh, spake uh, in this time passing to the fathers uh, by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. His son and what do we want from this and understand from this so greatly in the subject matter this morning? Whom he hath appointed heir of all things. He hath appointed him heir of all things. What are these things that's in the keeping of the Son of God? That God hath appointed him heir of all things by whom also he made the world. Just telling us by Christ. Amen. By the word, the second person, God spoke. The word, God said, let there be and there was. Amen. I can see in the very Trinity, the work of creation in the mind and purpose of God in the speaking through. Amen. The word, the second person bringing uh, in uh, to existence uh, that which was purposed uh, and it being kept uh, by the third person, the Holy Ghost, uh, such as the Spirit of God moving upon the face uh, of the deep. Uh, oh, uh, so we see uh, the total uh, working and keeping of creation in the three and one God, even so it is uh, by divine design uh, whereby God has done so uh, in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. To save his people. God the Father purposed to save them. Jesus came. Uh, amen. To do the uh, legal, uh, positional work. Uh, to reconcile. To line them back up. Uh, amen. To line the elect. Uh, Adam got God's people out of line. Well, oh, but I want to tell you, Jesus Christ, the last Adam, he put the elect back in line. Uh, many of you know about alignment. Amen. And uh, talk about an automobile uh, being in line. 
oh, where, where the drive well won't pull to the right, won't pull to the left, won't wire the tires out, and all these things bring about destruction and damage. Oh, I want to tell you, uh, Adam got mad. Uh, all of man out of line, including God's people out of alignment. Amen. But God in Christ reconciling, putting them back in line. Amen. With God lining them back up in a right position, in a legal position, whereby you see God is a just God. And God couldn't just sweep it under the rug. Amen. God just couldn't say and declare that it was just okay. Oh, but God had to have a remedy for it. There had to be a price paid. There had to be justice paid. And thank God in our substitute, the Lord Jesus Christ, it was paid. It was taken care of. Oh, this is something that undergirds grace. Amen. This is something that shows forth and puts a spotlight on uh, the very grace of God, the very uh, favor of God manifested to an undeserving people. God's elect are uh, certainly undeserving of the least of the mercies of God, especially, uh, amen, even of that of being housed in heaven and immortal glory. But it's because God so purposed it. Amen, that it was the very design of God or whom he hath appointed heir of all things, the inheritor of all things, the keeping of all things. Amen, here in this context, amen, and I believe uh, unto him uh, is also uh, entrusted and uh, is given in that design and in that uh, particular work uh, that Jesus Christ did. Uh, uh, all of it is in uh, that blessed design. And of course, very familiar uh, verses in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, starting there in verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. What's working together? Amen. For the good uh, to them that love God. And uh, we always remember that we love Him. If we love Him, it's because He first loved us. It's because He had to shed abroad His love in our hearts in regeneration. Or we would not love Him. We would not uh, love holiness. We would not love the things of God. We would not love the nature of God. We would not love and appreciate and have an affection uh, toward uh, our blessed Lord. Oh, but even as the more that we know of Him and understand of Him and come to rest in Him, uh, the more that that love is even uh, realized but we know that there are some things. We know that there are some uh, things and so in the design of God that Christ, uh, amen, uh, he is the keeper of uh, that our blessed Lord uh, has been entrusted with uh, uh, from the divine Godhead. Uh, and these uh, uh, that love God uh, to them who are the called according to his purpose, the ones that love him are also the ones that are called according to his purpose purpose. Uh, that's what I have uh, been talking about uh, interchangeably uh, throughout this for the last 20 minutes. Uh, amen. The very purpose of God, the very uh, design of God, uh, it, it's all uh, showing forth uh, and it's through grace uh, and grace alone. Uh, amen. God's love, uh, God's grace, uh, God's mercy, uh, uh, God's faithfulness. Uh, it's all uh, of the attributes and characteristics of a thrice only God. Uh, amen. All backs up uh, uh, this purpose uh, uh, that is so purposed in God uh, and His purpose moving Him who are the called according to His purpose. Uh, uh, the elect are in the purpose of God and they're, they're called according to that purpose. Uh, uh, they love God according to that purpose. And these things that he's about to tell us, amen, are to those, the objects of his love, uh, according to his purpose. Amen. It's all according to his purpose of the salvation of his elect. 
And it tells us that these that were purposed, for whom? The ones that are purposed, for whom? That's the ones that he did foreknow, that he foreloved with an affectionate, a mighty great love. Oh, what manner of love hath the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. What manner? Behold what manner. Behold what manner. Take a look at it. Step back and take a look. <laughs> Amen. Oh, knowing what the Bible says, knowing what the, uh, the, the teaching of God's uh, precious word says, behold uh, the manner, behold what manner of love. Amen. You see, it was love that moved God to give his son. How you know, preacher? For God so loved the world, for God so loved, God so loved the world. Amen. This is the world of his people. Amen. Jews and Gentiles that he has a people out of. Oh, uh, 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 I can also hear in that the Lord saying it's not just to you, old Jew. Amen. It's to the Gentiles also. For God so loved the world, Jews and Gentiles, his people uh, out of every nation, out of every kindred, uh, of people uh, that he loved, that he foreknew, uh, that he foresaw uh, uh, before he ever created anything, before time ever began. I mean, this is just Primitive Baptist 101. First and foremost, this is Bible doctrine basic. Uh, fundamental uh, this morning. Uh, uh, that we be reminded uh, of these things from time to time and reminded that we are built upon this. Uh, oh, uh, that all of our duty, that all of our discipleship, uh, uh, that all of our stewardship, uh, uh, that all of our uh, uh, being a good servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, a faithful servant. None of that would be so if it wasn't for what I'm trying to preach this morning. Amen. None of that would even be so because we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here in this capacity. We wouldn't be here in this state of mind being illuminated with these wonderful truths. Oh, if God had not purposed and done what he has done. Therefore, he deserves all the credit. He deserves all the praise. He deserves all the glory and all the honor. For it's God that hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own riches and grace and glory that he gave unto us in Christ Jesus even before the world began. Brothers and sisters, oh, that's the plain teaching of the truth. We need to rejoice in that. We need to praise God our Father who is the Father of spirits. Amen. Who is the, who is the Father of life. We need to praise Him for this eternal life. We need to praise Him uh, for this eternal life that was purposed in Christ Jesus, that was promised in Christ Jesus, and that was given in Christ Jesus. Amen. And to the objects of God's love, uh, even before the world began, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. Yes, we are predestinarian. Amen. We believe in the doctrine. Amen. That God predestinated a people that God predetermined uh, the eternal destination before time uh, in the mind and purpose of God it's always been with God the same people that he foreknew uh, amen the very objects of his love uh, uh, that their destiny uh, that their final end uh, would be with him in heaven in immortal glory in a glorified state uh, that is the very purpose. That is, uh, amen, the end, uh, amen, of the glorification uh, or when God's people uh, are delivered uh, safe. Uh, it is a predetermined destination, uh, amen, that God did. Uh, God, you see, uh, in God's mind and purpose, when God uh, looked upon uh, Adam's family, uh, when God looked down from heaven, you know, uh, 
our, uh, our, uh, our Armenian friends, our new school uh, uh, Baptist friends, uh, uh, they like to talk about the Lord looking down. You know, the Lord looking down. Well, I can read in the Bible, amen, of the Lord looking down. But I want to tell you, it, the Scripture don't talk about, amen, that the same things that they talk about uh, where it says the Lord looked down. Uh, oh, uh, they say the Lord looked down and saw who would and who wouldn't and this, that, and the other. I want to tell you, when the Lord foresaw, when He, uh, in His perfect knowledge uh, and foreknowledge, saw and knew uh, the very works and the condition uh, of the human family, He saw them all in ruin, all in corruption. Uh, he beheld and saw them all on the left, uh, out of line, uh, out of a, a, not in a reconciled state, but in an unreconciled state, in, uh, out of line, if you please. He saw them uh, there on the left. Oh, but when he chose a people, he chose them in Christ. And in Christ is always, and, and, and we preached, tried to preach a discourse here many months ago about God. God's uh, right hand and about Christ on the right and the significance of it. Uh, amen. Oh, uh, what did God do? Uh, we believe that God uh, chose a people uh, out of uh, Adam's family uh, that God in his knowledge saw. Uh, he chose them out of and chose them in Christ uh, and he set them in Christ, placed them in Christ uh, and therefore uh, they're on the right. They're in the right. Uh, amen. The Lord Jesus Christ uh, and he left the others uh, on the left. He left them right where they were. Our doctrine, uh, our, the Bible doctrine, which is our doctrine? <laughs> Amen. The Bible doctrine, which I believe is our doctrine that we hold fast to, uh, it, do, it does no violence uh, uh, to those on the left. It does no violence uh, uh, to those uh, uh, that were left right where they were. Uh, uh, it, it, it doesn't harm them or hurt them in any way. It doesn't make their condition any worse than what it is. Uh, dearly beloved, uh, we don't believe that God uh, predestinated uh, anyone uh, to an everlasting punishment. We don't believe uh, in a, a double uh, predestination. We believe that God has predestinated a people, a certain number, uh, out of the human family uh, based upon his own purpose, uh, based upon uh, his own desire to ward and he has full right and full authority to do so because he is God. And of course, there's the argument and there's always the carnal reply and try to charge God foolishly and try to judge God is unfair, it's unfair, it's unfair. Oh, I want to tell you that's not the picture that I see. Amen, that this Bible Amen, gives unto us and teaches us concerning, amen, this wonderful, thrice holy God and that he is the judge of all the earth and will not the judge of the, all the earth do that which is right. There is no injustice in God. There is no wrong in God uh, whatsoever. Well, oh, God is always right. <laughs> amen, he's always right. <laughs> you know, and if we don't hold that and if we don't hold that fast, we can waver. Amen. We'll waver on a lot of points. If we don't hold fast, amen, to the superiority and to the sovereignty of God and to the rightness and to the correctness of Scripture, uh, then uh, we're, we're up for anything, brothers and sisters. Amen. We've got to hold fast to those tenets. Amen. To those fundamental, foundational, amen, undergirding pillars of great truth. Uh, that we're stationed upon, that we're built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets and Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone to this great truth that's been deposited, amen, through Christ and through the apostles uh, uh, into the gospel church. Uh, oh, uh, and uh, we are admonished and told to keep it uh, and to hold fast unto it uh, and not let it go, not let it slip. Uh, I don't apologize this morning uh, for what I believe, uh, amen, concerning these things that I'm preaching to you. I, uh, uh, I, 
I know you're favorable. <laughs> Amen. Uh, you know, you're a very friendly congregation preaching to on these things. It'd be a whole lot harder preaching these things to a, a, a room uh, uh, full of Armenians and, and a work system, uh, people and so forth. Uh, oh, uh, but we need uh, to be admonished toward uh, and a remembrance uh, of these things, not to let them slip, but to, to undergird us, uh, that we would be courageous, uh, that we would ever stand upon these, uh, and that you would teach them to your children, uh, oh, uh, and that they uh, would be nourished uh, in these wonderful truths uh, and fight as they come along, uh, and the Lord blesses them and illuminates uh, their heart and mind and understanding uh, that they will, that these great things will be as precious uh, unto them uh, as they are unto you. Uh, uh, that you've been saved by these things of many a time, that you've been saved by hope. Uh, uh, that's a temporal deliverance. That's a great deliverance uh, while we live right here on the shores of time. Oh, that we have been saved by this hope, delivered by the hope. Uh, uh, so many times, as, as you've heard me say, you know, a lot of times people say, well, which way is it, preacher? Saved by grace or saved by hope? It's both. It's just in the right context. Amen. We're saved by grace for heaven and mortal glory. We're saved by hope. Amen. Of a, uh, while we live right here, uh, it's for here and for now. And as I said, the more that we rest upon it, uh, the more that we embrace, uh, the more that we acknowledge, the more that we speak uh, of these great things, uh, the more uh, that we meditate uh, upon these wonderful things uh, uh, here and that God has made Christ heir of, uh, 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 which are, are great pillars uh, uh, in uh, the gospel church of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, 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 foundational uh, uh, that distinguish us and Separate us. Oh, uh, that we certainly believe in a systematic uh, theology. Amen. As the scriptures reveal of God that it is systematic. Uh, that it is not contradictory. That it is not confusing. But when you rightly divide uh, the scriptures where so many folks go astray and get so confused... Is where uh, they try to take uh, the temporal admonitions and exhortations and the things of duty that we're called upon uh, as having this hope in Christ uh, and of the Lord's blessings toward us and, and giving us some uh, understanding of His great truth and uh, whereby that we render service unto Him here in this life and own Him as our Master and our Lord. They take them as things that they've got to do in order to have a home in heaven. And that's the problem. That's the great problem. You know, when, when I came to see the difference in those things, it was the most liberating time in my life. It was just like a, a, a large, humongous weight lifted off of me. A great burden lifted off of me. Oh, to know that it wasn't encumbered upon me and that I wasn't responsible for one person being in heaven in immortal glory or one person being in an everlasting punishment. Amen. That what I did or didn't do as far as hindering anyone uh, that, to keep them out of heaven or causing someone to go to hell. I want to tell you, that's a great burden lifted off. And if you've never been under that burden, then you just don't quite understand it. Amen. But if you had ever been under that burden, you'd have understood it. Amen. To realize, oh, oh that it is God that has saved us. And that He has uh, done this in this design and in this purpose as the Apostle Paul is presenting and giving forth here for whom he did foreknow. He also did predestinate. And what did he predestinate? To be conformed to the image of his son. You see, the children of God are, have to go, are going to have to be conformed to the image of the son of God in order to live with God in heaven. That's, that's why we can say that we're predestinated to live with God in glory. Amen. It's because we are predestinated amen, uh, to be conformed to the image of his son. 
And I tell you, when we're conformed uh, uh, totally, completely, and fully to the image of His Son in true holiness and righteousness, uh, it will only be in that glorified state. It will only be at the end uh, of time in the resurrection uh, when the dead in Christ shall rise first uh, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And of course, uh, uh, we'll have to go through a change if we're living and remain we, and as the apostle then said in 1 Corinthians 15 we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed amen thank God that change is coming oh and uh, so that last great change and you know if you remember uh, we tried to, to preach one Sunday morning on that last great change amen that last great change uh, which is glorification Oh, that's the final thing. Amen. And you see, the, the Lord Jesus is the keeper of it. Oh, uh, that's why the Apostle Paul could say with such confidence in uh, Philippians 1 and 6 uh, uh, that he is faithful. Uh, uh, he that had begun this good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Unto the ultimate final full day of Jesus Christ. I believe that's the final day. Oh, he will perform it. He will keep it. Oh, God not only began this work, he is the author and finisher of our faith. Author means the originator, the 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 begetter, amen, of it. And we, of course, we know uh, that faith uh, is one of the fruit of the Spirit and you can't uh, bear uh, uh, the, the fruit of the Spirit without the Spirit. Uh, one cannot bear good fruit unless there's a good tree, unless there's a good nature, amen. I'm talking about Christ in you, the hope of glory uh, that is in you. Uh, you won't be able uh, to believe and trust and have confidence in the Lord God Almighty and confidence in His Word. So He is the begetter. He is the originator of it. And He is the finisher of it. How's, how's He the finisher of it? Because He's the keeper of it. Amen. From the originator, the keeper, the finisher. <laughs> oh, yes. Now, uh, as far as us manifesting and bearing it forth, uh, we, we falter and fail a lot of times and oh ye of little faith and uh, slow in faith and, and so forth and on and uh, even to those that uh, uh, would uh, be uh, laid waste and laid uh, sidetracked uh, even as those that the, the apostle uh, Paul talked about uh, having their faith overthrown. Uh, but nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, S-E-A-L, having this seal, uh, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Amen. Even David speaking as a prophet, uh, he said his house wouldn't so. His house wasn't uh, infallible. His house wasn't uh, totally sure. Uh, his house, uh, and, and we know uh, of what his house suffered, but yet God had promised uh, uh, of the one that would uh, reign upon the throne uh, 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 forever and ever and of course that was completed in David's greater son the Lord uh, Jesus Christ but far as David's natural house it wouldn't so uh, amen but it is so with God uh, amen that his house is sure uh, amen that his house uh, is steadfast uh, amen all of the elect of God uh, to be housed uh, in heaven in immortal glory oh how we uh, do praise the Lord for that uh, so this predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. And of course, as Ephesians tells us, uh, that this predestination that's under consideration, uh, what does it do? That he predestinated us into the adoption of uh, children. 
So uh, uh, here brings in uh, the, the doctrine, the teaching uh, of adoption. Uh, because you see, we're all in Adam's family. God created a natural man. And there's a natural family. There's an earthly man, Adam. Oh, but thank God, uh, there's a last Adam that's from heaven. Uh, this first uh, Adam was made uh, a living soul. Uh, this last Adam is made a quickening spirit, a life-giving spirit. Uh, he gives life. He gives uh, eternal life uh, unto his people. Uh, so uh, God, uh, in choosing, uh, in taking out of Adam's family uh, adoption, he adopted uh, and he has given us uh, uh, the spirit of adoption uh, uh, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, uh, uh, we cry, God, our Father, uh, in and by and through the Spirit of God that witnesses uh, uh, back to the glory world uh, uh, from our very uh, born again regenerated being, uh, that cleaned out place wherein abides, uh, amen, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost by the Spirit of God, Christ in you and uh, of we in him for we're baptized into him uh, by the spirit in regeneration I think probably by now I've done hit upon about two dozen uh, doctrines uh, cardinal truths if anybody's trying to keep count you can go back and listen to the tape and go through there and number them out but that don't have a whole lot of bearing but nevertheless uh, uh, you're kind of getting in the nutshell. I said this morning, I, uh, I felt, uh, amen, impressed by the Lord and felt that we needed a, a good dose of grace. Uh, amen, that we needed, uh, amen, to be reminded, uh, amen, uh, and wherein we can rejoice in a Savior's love and what the Lord has done for us uh, and to praise His great and wonderful name and to remember what it's all about and why it's all about what it is about. Amen, preacher. I'll say amen to that. All right. So he hath predestinated us into the adoption of children. Oh, he has sent forth the Spirit as it is written in one place. He has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Because ye are sons. Oh, not to make us sons. We are his children, first and foremost, in his purpose. In his purpose. Purpose given in Christ even before the world began. Hard to get your mind wrapped around that, isn't it? But we have to remember, we, we have trouble with that because we're time beings. And we have the encumberments of time. And we have all the restrictions and, 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 and everything we're trained uh, in time. And uh, to do with time. Oh, but we're talking about God this morning that is eternal. We're talking about God that is not bound except the ways that He binds Himself from time to time with the principles of creation that He put into existence itself. I tell you, God here in time works uh, in a usual and customary manner. Uh, his workings uh, 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 here in, in, in time uh, by means He works uh, in uh through in those principles, uh, he does not uh, defy his principles that he has established in laws that govern. Uh, but from time to time, he has. And those uh, times, he has shown forth his power. Why? Because he is the creator of it. He's the creator of those laws. Amen. Just, just like the scripture talks about, Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they got on to the Lord because they went through and plucked some corn to eat on the, on the Sabbath and uh, so forth and on different things. And the biggest thing, though, was because he healed some people on the Sabbath day. Oh, he healed a, a woman that had been stooped over, I believe, for 18 years, if I remember correctly at this point in time. Oh, should not this daughter, a daughter of Abraham, should she not be delivered? Uh, and uh, remember, uh, even uh, as we talked about uh, uh, Z Zacchaeus, uh, he, he was a son of Abraham. Should salvation not come to his house? Oh, so I want to tell you, amen, the, the Lord never sinned and the Lord uh, never defiled and, and never broke 
uh, his law in that accordance. He dotted every I and crossed every T, but he is the, the Lord of the Sabbath. And what greater way to honor the Sabbath than to honor the working and power of God? So we, we know that carnality and the carnal mind is always trying to uh, come up with things, uh, especially... Uh, in, in, in justifying, to justify self and whatever, to, to point a finger just like, uh, you know, the, the, when Jesus came to this earth, uh, even upon uh, uh, far as marriage and divorce, there were a lot of different schools of ideas uh, even concerning that. And, uh, there was two main schools of thought among the Jews. Uh, and there were those that believed, as the Scriptures taught, uh, that a man did not have a right to divorce his wife for any cause. Uh, uh, there was only one uh, reason of unfaithfulness, uh, uh, only uh, one right uh, for is that divorcement. Then there was the school uh, uh, that taught uh, uh, that a man could practically divorce his wife for any reason whatsoever. And of course, they took out of context so many different things. And uh, you know how those Jews always wanted to do. They wanted to run back to Abraham. They wanted to throw up Abraham. And uh, so they relied on Abraham a lot of times and, and uh, take things out of context and twist them and turn them and talk about Abraham uh, and uh, even uh, of him taking uh, uh, Hagar and uh, different things along that line. But anyway, they could take and twist and turn uh, to justify. Well, that's what the, the carnal mind uh, wants to do. I, I tell you, there are so many that you know, try to and have in time past uh, and must, without saying it and using them words, but polygamy and uh, multiple far as wives and, and so forth. But, uh, but we see from the very beginning that that was not so. We know how that God created and made uh, one woman and brought her, made one. Read Malachi chapter 2. Get those verses in 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 down through there. All oh, the teacher uh, brings forth such the language there uh, that when you write it, divide it, and understand that God made one. He could have created uh, more than one woman and brought to Adam, but he didn't do it. But, and he could have infused souls and spirits into every uh, one that he brought forth or built uh, from the dust of the ground, for he is the father of spirits. Oh, but, but brothers and sisters, uh, he didn't do that. Uh, it wasn't in the, the scheme. It wasn't in the, uh, the design uh, of God. Uh, but these in the name of religion so twisted and uh, so tried to change uh, all of these things uh, to bring about to whatever the motive was and for uh, self-justification. You see, that's what carnality does. That's what the Adamic nature uh, does. The, the Adamic nature always tries to justify sin. Certainly it does. Oh, and so therefore we know that if God had not designed, if God had not purposed, if God had not foreknown the people, if God had not uh, did this uh, uh, to predestinate, to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn uh, among uh, many brethren uh, to, to predestinate us to the image uh, of His Son, and that, that Christ is the firstborn among many brethren. We know that he was made like unto his brethren. Uh, he is the only begotten Son of God. God has only one begotten Son. Oh, but he has many sons by adoption. Many sons that he adopted, that he chose out of the human family. Oh, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, say preachers, there more to it? Yes, there is. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Amen. These are the things that are working together for the good, amen, of God's elect. Oh, to those... 
who are the, the called according to his purpose. And as we were reading there in 2 Timothy, and then uh, quoted just a little bit of that ending, but just let me turn there and read that in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1 and verse 9, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works. For by grace are you saved and through faith, and not that not of yourself, but it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. There's no boasting in the uplifting, amen, of the preaching and understanding and the teaching of God's word of grace. Work system that man has so designed, that man has took out of context, that man has gathered a little here and a little there, and as I said, that has tried to take the very things of discipleship, the very things of service that God calls upon His people and exhorts and admonishes us in a way of duty, but have taken those and made them legalistic and demand uh, that individuals perform these acts and do these things in order to have a home in heaven. No, it's He has made Christ heir of all these things. It's been given in his hand to save his people. This is why the angel said, call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people. He shall save his people. They're his. He owns them. How are they his? How does he own them? Because the Father gave them to him. All that the Father hath given me shall come to me. This is the effectual call. This is the call this is the long distance call. This is the heavenly call. Amen. This is the drawing power of God that God draws one uh, that is benign and dead and trespassing sin and raises them to life in Christ Jesus. Uh, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. That is a passive coming. We are totally passive in that. You know, that was one of the things some 25 years or so ago that, that some began to alter and change uh, from that very text in John chapter 6 in verse 37 and say that that was an outward coming, not an inward coming. That that has to do with the gospel. That has to do with obedience coming in a way of discipleship. I deny that. I don't believe that. I don't believe that's what the Scripture is teaching us. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. In that context, he's talking about, amen, the drawing power of God. Amen. That when God draws, none refuses. Just like when the Lord said, Lazarus, come forth. What did, what did Lazarus do? He came forth, did he not? Certainly he did. He didn't come forth of his own power. He didn't come forth of his own ability. Oh, but it's because the Lord raised him from the dead, gave him life, and drew him, brought him out. Oh, and that's exactly, exactly what the Lord does. And this effectual call, it cannot be resisted. It certainly is the irresistible grace of God. God's grace in the time of regeneration cannot be resisted. He said he would make his people willing in the day of his power. Uh, uh, we are passively uh, willing in that. And he makes his people, he gives his people, he worketh in them. Uh, the to do and the to will, uh, the, the desire and the ability then to perform those things that his word calls upon uh, us to do. But it's the very power of God. But according to his own purpose and grace, purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus, given us in Christ, promised in Christ, purposed in Christ, given us in Christ before the world began. It was just as sure, it's just as sure to every hour of promise. It's always been just as sure to every hour of promise from, from, the, from even before the foundation of the world, uh, there in the mind and the purpose of God in God's mind and God's purpose has always been the same. There's no beginning with God. And, and so... 
the very being, the very nature of God has always been the same. Our timely vocabulary cannot do it justice. No, it cannot. We cannot adequately uh, describe that. But we just have to say, I mean, I want, you know, if, if, if God had not purposed it, if God had not so designed it, when the whole human family fell in Adam, and if God had not purposed to recover a people, because God's elect could not recover themselves out of that state that they were in by nature, in that nature's darkness, it takes that translating power of God being translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the, into the kingdom of His dear Son. So moreover whom He did predestinate, them He also called, and whom He called, them He also justified, and whom He justified, them He also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? What shall we say to these things? These are the things that he has listed here. And, all, and everything else and all the things that we've touched upon will come under uh, these things. Here, what shall we say to them? If God be for us, who can be against us? That's what we're going to say to them. That's the summation. That's the conclusion that I come up with. All these things here that we're told about teaches us that God is for us. That God is for His people. If God be for us, who can be against us? And that's why the apostle picks up that theme in those last verses of this chapter when he goes through a list and says and talks about that nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Nothing can separate us from that electing love. Nothing can separate us from that foreknown, that effectual, fervent, purposeful love of God as we behold the manner of love the Father has bestowed, that He has manifested that God so loved the world of His people. So what shall we then say to these things, these things that we just went over? If God be for us, who can be against us? Then listen to this in verse 32. We're going to come to a close. He that spared not his own son. He that spared not his own son. God did not spare his only begotten son, but he gave him. God so loved that he gave. God so loved that he gave. God's love was of such that it was a giving love that he gave he gave His Son. Who shall... Notice that. In verse 32. He that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all. Delivered us up for all. Someone will say, well, there it is. Everyone's in included. How in the world can you draw that conclusion when we have just talked about Amen. The, the things and the context and the, the all things, the all things that are under consideration, give Him up for, uh, for us all. So only those that are embraced in the foreknow and predestinate and called and glorified and, and justified and glorified can be in this all. Only, only those can compose and and make up this all, all that's under consideration. You know, you go down to a train depot, and the train's arrived, and the, and the conductor calls out, and there's a large group of people there. There's people there that have a ticket. People there that have, that's, the ticket is paid for. They have a right to get on board the train. There's people there seeing them off. Uh, they don't have a ticket. Uh, they haven't paid the fare. Nothing has been provided for them. And, uh, or people passing by that might hear it. Uh, and the conductor says, all aboard. Now, does that conductor, does he mean for every person that under the sound of his voice that's included in that all to get on board that train? No. 
Those that don't have the tickets, they're not included in that all. All that's under consideration. Who does the conductor have under consideration when he says all aboard? It's those that are qualified. It's those that have the ticket. It's those that have had the price paid for. Oh, so uh, this is in the same sense that he says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? These same things that he's just talked about. What shall we say to these things? These five things. How does he give us these things? Through his son. Who who shall? Notice in verse 33 then. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies now, if no, one can, if no one can come to any conclusion, but if God be for you, who can be against you? And that God didn't spare his son, but he delivered him up for all that's included here, all that is involved here, the objects of his love, then who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? No one. It is God. That justify. It's God that declares just. Thank God this morning for His grace. Thank God this morning for who He is, His nature, His very being. We rejoice in that Savior's love. God bless you this morning. It's my prayer. Select a song. We'll stand together.